Today we're gonna to talk about a couple of things that will almost like instantly make your drone footage look way more cinematic. A couple of days ago I took my drone out and fly it around a like for a while here in Gothenburg, which was the sequence that you saw in the beginning. And Gothenburg is a beautiful town, especially in the summer. It's like, mm, especially since the sun is up to like 10 p.m. midsummer. That is, that is just awesome. And I didn't get like any kind of like really cinematic shots when I was out flying, but when I get into post production, that is where like most of the magic happens. So I thought we should like break down all the things from when you're actually flying the drone to when you get into the post-production. Right. So the first thing is gonna be that it's gonna be really important, especially if you wanna be able to color grade your footage, that you shoot in a really flat profile on your drone. Personally, I did shoot in d -Cinelite for a long time, but I just recently switched to D-Log, which is really, really fun to play around with. And since you guys have been asking, I actually created a cinematic drone LUT pack that you can use on your own videos, and it gives a really good result on your like D-Log footage like straight out of the box and I'm gonna show you how you actually use the LUTs and get the best kind of cinematic look with the LUTs so you just don't buy the LUTs and then smack it on your footage and it looks like this and then you're gonna be like hmm Peter you just fooled me so when you're shooting in D-Log it's really important that you get the correct exposure in your footage because you kind of want to overexpose your footage when you're shooting in a flat profile and personally I try to go somewhere that is like plus 1.7 or plus 2.0 on the exposure compensation and if you want to be able to keep the shutter speed down to like 1 50th then you actually need to have ND filters. I am using the Polar Pro ND filters. This is a really old pack. I bought like three years ago. I mainly use ND8 and ND16 depending on what time of day that I'm actually flying with the drone. So when you're actually flying the drone and you got the ND filters on, you get the shutter speed correct and then you got the D log, the flat profile, you want to make sure that set the white balance to a fixed white balance because you don't want the camera to adjust the white balance as you are recording because then it's going to be a pain to color grade that when you get into the editing process. Always try to make smooth movements with your drone when you're actually shooting a sequence. I see loads of videos here on YouTube where people actually have that like small tiny jitter in the drone where that remote is just like <laughs> nudging to one side or the other and you don't want to have that in your footage you i always try to edit that part out so that you only get those smooth like pannings and smooth tilts with your gimbal and stuff like that and if you have a subject in your shot then you want to like pan around it so that you can like get a nice dynamic shot where your subject is moving forward and you are flying like like a half a circle around or for example this shot where Oscar is running on the bridge he's on the far right of the shot and I'm flying like following him trying to like pan the drone around him that is a really like dynamic feel to the shot so always try to think what your subject is when you're flying the drone another thing that you can do that I tried a lot in Norway is to fly really low this is gonna be like <laughs> it's gonna feel a bit dangerous but it will give you some like really cool footage and if you like fly straight for maybe like a minute or two minutes then you can speed that up to make the feeling that your drone is going really really fast above the ground and that you're flying super fast even though you might might just be flying really really slow with your drone and then you can also use foregrounds in your shot because that will actually like reveal the background in a more like powerful way when you're flying the drone so say for example that you have a like small hill on the left hand side like this shot and then you're flying the drone forwards and then you reveal this massive landscape it feels so much more powerful when you have that foreground in the shot because it feels like it's flying close it, there's so much to look at and then it reveals this whoa, huge mountain of uh, Galdherpigen I think it was like in Norway the best part for me is definitely when I get into the editing process because like that is where I think all the magic is happening to my shots because when you piece everything together you can make a really really good looking sequence even though your footage might not have been that epic it still looks really really good so the first thing that I do when I get into Final Cut Pro is that I drag 
like one of the clips down to the timeline. And for example, you can see here, it looks kind of like washed out and really like bland, but I'm gonna show you how I use my LUTs to make this look like a really, really good shot. And what I do is that I use Cinema Grade, and you can also find a link to this down below as well if you wanna buy that, which I think it's a really good program if you're doing a lot of color grading to your videos. And then I drag it onto the clip, and then I go up here, and then I choose the LUT that I wanna use. And in this case, I'm gonna go with Epic Sunset, which is in the cinematic drone pack. So we add that, and as you can see, like we already have some really good colors added to our shot. Right now, the shadows are a little bit dark and the highlights aren't that bright. So I wanna make some slight adjustments to the shot before we actually get that really cinematic look. So we're gonna drag up the highlights just a little bit somewhere around here and then we're gonna drag up the shadows and then we can drag down the midtones and then we can increase the saturation just a little bit to maybe like 10 or something like that right there that looks good and then we can increase the contrast drag up the shadows a little bit more and that actually looks kind of good and if we look at the before and after doing those small tweaks to the LUT you can see that it looks really good when we added the LUT and then a couple of small tweaks. But for example, if we take a shot that is a bit darker, that is not shot towards the sun, then you can like drag this to the timeline and then we're gonna do the same. We're gonna drag cinema grade onto that and then we're gonna open controls. If we add a lot to this, I'm gonna choose the urban concrete here. Then you can see that it just basically crushes your footage and makes it look really, really bad. But that is why you wanna have the LUT and use it as a starting point to your color grading. You should not buy a LUT pack and think that the LUT pack on its own is gonna make your footage look amazing because a LUT pack is like a place to start to get a specific look on your footage. So maybe it just works like smacking on the LUT and then it looks good. But most cases it's gonna be like the LUT does give you some kind of starting point and then you work your way with the color grading from there. And if you wanna take it to another level, then you could just like add these anamorphic cinematic bars to your footage and it will definitely look way more cinematic with those added. And the absolute biggest thing that I think is a really, really key part to making everything look and feel very cinematic is definitely gonna be the sound effects. Because if you pay attention to the sound effects, then it will make your footage both look and feel way more epic than it actually might be. Just to show you how big difference it is, I'm gonna show you a clip of Elf's Boys Brun here in Gothenburg without any sound effects added at all. And then we add some sounds of seagulls, maybe a honking car, maybe some heavy traffic, and maybe some like shopper sounds. And then you got this. That is a big difference, right? Yeah. So those are a couple of things that will instantly make your drone footage look way more cinematic when you're out flying, when you're editing everything together and posting it onto YouTube. Really hope that you found this video useful and if you liked it, do give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for that. And uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be really appreciated as well. And uh, I would love to know what your best tips are on getting cinematic drone footage down below. So do drop a comment. Until next time, take care. Can you imagine that we are 13,000 subscribers on the channel right now it feels feels awesome amazing and at the same time a bit scary but i highly appreciate that you're here i really really enjoy doing this so thanks so much for being here thank you so much for the support dropping the comments giving the likes and everything you know i'm i'm just having a blast so uh thank you thank you so much are we done yet like this is just getting like smudgier come on like this is a bad this is a bad 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 what is this called prosa bad uh what is it i don't know bad uh bad uh, uh wipe wipe bad wipe i'll say that bad wipe